Yeah, uh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna spend a lot of time on this artwork. Hello people of the internet, my name is Marcel and I have returned in order to take a gander at your guys' artwork once again and help you out with your problems. Or at least I'll try it. And in today's episode I picked an entry that I have a lot to talk about, so I'm probably gonna take my sweet time with it. And it's also something that you guys struggle a lot with, I know that for a fact, so I thought picking this one might be very helpful. And also, of course, if you have any original artwork that you might struggle with, just wait until the end of the episode and I will tell you how you can get your art to appear in this format. Again, let's get drawing. Like a sir. All right, this is the very first entry that I'm going to talk about. It came from a German subscriber of mine. They've been reaching out to me, telling me that they are struggling a lot with blending together the foreground and the background of their art. Also mentioning that they are very new to drawing digitally yet. Yeah, uh, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna spend a lot of time on this artwork here. There's a lot to unpack and to correct here because we will be talking about two very big, large things here. My ball. Okay, yeah, sorry, we'll be talking about color and lighting because color and light are key in order to integrate something believably into an artwork, but they are also very big topics, so this uh, might take a while. These tips that I'm about to show you work wonders though. This is the workflow that I'm always using in order to make artworks. I make smaller artworks like these within an hour or two, so it really is just nothing but applying knowledge here. Alright then, let's start with the colors of this artwork first, because maybe you can already spot it. So color-wise, what do you think? What's the biggest flaw here? Well, it's obviously beginner mistake number one, and that's saturation. Maybe you remember though. Here's a clip. And now this is where especially digital artists make the mistake of thinking, uh, yeah, of course I want to have the most intense colors. I'm using the most intense red, the most intense green, the most intense blue colors I could have. Yeah, the problem's saturation. Just compare the colors of the rug, for example, with the colors of the chair. One's very muted, while the other one is very bright and vibrant. It doesn't look like it really actually fits together. So let's mute the colors that are too vibrant a bit. Mainly everything in the foreground. I know what you're about to say, this might not look pretty at first, but our goal for now isn't making an artwork look pretty, it's making it look consistent first. And now let's continue with the bigger issue in this artwork, lighting. Like I said, this is gonna be a lot, but the values of this artwork are completely off. Remember, light is always, always the brightest thing in your art. So why is the shirt of this dude brighter than the actual light that's coming from your windows? Like, your clothing can't be brighter than light itself. So this is going to be the next thing that we are doing, dimming everything that's pure white. Meaning the shirt, the flowers, just muting it all down to a light gray instead of a pure white. By the way, do you want to see how far we've come yet with these just very simple corrections? Here's the old version and here's the corrected one. Again, old, new. Again, keep in mind we are doing this for consistency's sake. It's gonna make sense in a minute. Now let's take a look at your light source. As far as I understood it, you obviously wanted the outside light to be your main light source here. So let's kick that brightness up a notch and make the windows a bit brighter here to indicate the light coming from the outside. And next up, you also wanted to have some light rays in your original art, it seems. So let's paint them in as well. And now that we have your actual light source, we can start shading and highlighting. Now it always works like this. Visualizing your light source and then comes the shading and highlighting stuff. Otherwise you will have shadows like you have in this artwork where the shading doesn't make any sense at all. Alright, so your light source is to your left, so that's why all of your highlights should be on your left side as well. Yeah, I think that way it makes way more sense. 
And now we are doing that with everything in this artwork. So on the left side, items like the globe or the lamp or the shelf get way brighter because they are directly hit by the light that's coming in. But also things on the right side, like the flower or the wine bottle, are being hit by the light. So yeah, they are all getting highlighted in the very same way. Oh, and also one last thing that I think we could improve here would be shadow. Because I don't know if you noticed, but some parts of this artwork, like the chair for example, don't cast any shadow at all. And that bugs me. Like a lot. So in order to make this artwork more believable, let's change that. I'm quickly adding some shadows here. And speaking of shadows, you could basically shade everything here in order to get in some more contrast. I personally love artworks with high contrast, so I just had to do this. But this is obviously all optional. Okay, so keep in mind, we've only just tweaked lighting and colors a tiny bit now. What I've quickly scribbled here have only been like 10 minutes off screen. So let's take a look at how these very simple changes have affected this artwork. Here's a comparison in case you wanted to see how much all of this impacted the artwork itself. I'd say this is a job well done here. Also, if you want to avoid beginner mistakes like these, just watch my tutorials on lighting and color theory. They are very similar to what we've been doing here. Okay, time out. I need some feedback from you guys here because I spent like half the episode on one artwork. I hope that was okay, by the way. Let me know if I should take a look at more artworks in depth like this, or if we should move through artworks quicker, like I did in the previous episode. Let me know how I should do this in the future, and also give this video a like while you're down there. I would really appreciate any support that I could get here. But I think we have time to look at another artwork though, so on to the next one. This uh, isn't a watch. I've picked a very fitting artwork as our next slash last contender since we've been talking about light and shadows already. So let's make this the uh, light and shadow episode, why not? Here's the drawing in question and this person here sent me their art because they were saying... I'm just starting to learn. Thank you so much for tutorials, English book in May. Book in May, that's right. But my face always seems very flat if I want to have a straight view. Okay, there are two ways to combat this. Uh, the first one would be to just draw a frontal face that has more three-dimensionality to it. I would like to imagine my art would be an okayish example on how to draw manga with this 3D kind of feeling. Or the other way to achieve this would be through some 3D shading. I mean, we've been talking about shading and highlighting so much now, we might as well make this whole episode about this topic. So that's why I'm showing you how to get more of a 3D feeling in this artwork by shading it more. Also because I don't want to redraw your entire artwork. <laughs> Okay, just like before, we're doing all of this together. Shadows as well as highlights. Because I know you guys struggle a lot with that. <laughs> and, and, and I mean, it's, it's not like I did a whole tutorial about this or something. <laughs> but, but hey, whatever, right? <laughs> okay, first of all, again, we have an issue with the light source here. For some reason, we have light coming from the side even though our light source should be right over here. Okay, but like, whatever, right? Maybe there's a lamp to his left, or maybe he lit a campfire to tell you creepy pastas or something. Let's suspend our disbeliefs here and just roll with it. He burned down an orphanage and now the fire lights up his face from the side, whatever. The reason why this shading looks so flat is because it doesn't take the shape of the face into consideration. Here's a photo of a person being lit from the side that didn't just burn down an orphanage. Maybe that's even one of the orphans that just lost their home and it's also being lit by the burning orphanage. You can clearly see how the light interacts with the face here. Just look at the eye socket that's also lit up. Or how visible his Adam's apple is. That's how you can clearly tell that these are 3D objects in a 3D face. Because light interacts with them in a 3D manner. Alright, now let's go ahead and apply this knowledge to your artwork. Okay, first let's make this a clean artwork again by removing your light so we can have a completely shaded face here. And just like with the artwork before, you used pure white to color the eyes? Again, why are his eyes lighter than the actual light source in the artwork? 
That way it kind of looks like his eyes are glowing or something. So let's maybe also shade the eyes here so that we can start highlighting this from scratch. Okay, we are shading this in an anime kind of style first because that's clearly what you've been going for here. Your light comes from the right side and it's obviously the right side of your face that's being lit first. Okay, those were the easy parts and now it's about highlighting some individual parts from the right. There's obviously the eye socket, like I pointed out before, there's the nose obviously, but I also highlighted the wing of your nose because they were so pronounced in your artwork anyway. Also, see how I cut Shadow off where his color is? With your original artwork, I noticed that you highlighted the whole neck as well as the shirt for some reason. Again, if you view this in a 3D kind of way, there obviously wouldn't be any shadow there. You could also get more detailed here because the light would also obviously hit the teeth or the lips. Also, don't forget about the hair, especially the tips would be completely lit up in this case. And yeah, I know especially beginners always really insist of their trademark anime eye highlights, so you can also add them. Now this was very basic, but you could also take all of this up a notch. Maybe you want your highlights to be a bit more smooth. So you could just use a smoother brush for that. That works especially good for smooth surfaces like the eye sockets or the cheek. Also, let's pull up our reference photo from before. And now you will notice that there isn't only light hitting this face from one side, but also from the other side as well. And this is so-called bounce light, and you could also integrate that into your artwork if you still feel like your face is looking too flat. Again, all of these were just some very simple corrections, but that's at least how you can get from this artwork to this artwork, and just a couple of quick corrections. And if you want to practice this stuff with some simpler explanations, I did make a video about shading. And I also did make a video on shading faces in particular that you can take a look at on my main channel. Again, please let me know if you prefer me talking about the individual artworks longer or not. This video, we only had two entries, but I feel like that allows me to go more into detail. Thank you so much for watching. Till the end, by the way, the more watch time we get on these videos, the quicker we can get them monetized. Please don't forget to also like these videos, boost them as much as you can, because this format is still an experiment and it's not set in stone how many episodes there are going to be yet. And also, if you have a problem with your artwork, definitely follow me on Instagram. I sometimes post stories like these where I tell you guys to go ahead and send me your art. And whenever you see me post a story like this, that's when you know you can send me your art and maybe you are in the next episode. Again, here are all episodes on screen if you're interested, and I'm looking forward to see you guys on the next episode of Art Aid.